<laughs> hey everyone, Claire, Claire Thene, Thene O'Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it is time for a review of the new Claro record, Immunity. The highly anticipated brand new album from singer-songwriter Claro, aka Claire Cottrell, an artist who busted into the music industry a few years ago off the back of her YouTube hit, Pretty Girl, a seemingly low-budget song and music video that made Claro an overnight indie sensation. But that praise has also come with a heaping helping of skepticism, as internet sleuths have kind of exposed her as an industry plant with familial connections to the entertainment world. And while I don't really care for those that fake the DIY funk, I think the efforts to delegitimize Claire as an artist are a bit ridiculous, especially considering she had been releasing music for years before Pretty Girl even blew up. The only thing that's going to matter at the end of the day is whether or not this album resonates with listeners, whether or not it's good. I know I was certainly pleased with a few pleasant sounding singles going into this thing, and I was sort of surprised to hear that Rostam of Vampire Weekend fame, he's now out of Vampire Weekend, co-produced pretty much every track here. Considering all of this, I was looking forward to trying this thing out. And I guess overall it's a somewhat enjoyable hodgepodge of pop and R&B, a bit of indie rock. I guess you could say it's reflective of the playlistification of modern music. It runs almost like a very warm, friendly, familiar mixtape a friend made you years and years ago. The whole record kicks off with the song Alewife, a very breezy and uh, somewhat dramatic opener. It features a gentle drone, some pensive pianos, also a bittersweet vocal. The instrumentation, the song, both are so faint they don't really leave that strong of an impression on me. It also does not help that Claire's singing gives off this mix of indifference and malaise. But what's actually haunting about this track, though, are the lyrics. Where Claire seems to have someone in mind who has essentially pulled her back from the edge of suicide or self-harm, uh, whether that be through just being there or like literally doing everything in their power to prevent it from happening. The next track, Impossible, does have a bit more beef to it instrumentally, which I like. We have a chunky drum beat that could have fit behind an old school hip hop song. But thrown on top of that are these regal keyboard passages and slinky bass lines and guitar bits that would sound at home in a Beach House song. Vocally, Claire does come off a bit bolder than she did on the intro, but to my ears, she still fails to leave a lasting impression. Though I gotta say, there were some stunning vocal harmonies over the piano breakdown on the hook. Don't care for how awkwardly these choruses transitioned back into the main theme of the song and then fizzled out very badly at the end of the track. It sort of seemed like one of many moments on this record where the songwriting or the song structures feel a bit half-baked or a lot of thought wasn't put into them. The first song that really stops me in my tracks, though, is the track Closer to You, which is odd because it's easily one of the, 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 the quietest songs on this record. It doesn't really present much at first with a very dry, simple, sequenced drum beat. A very gentle and polite synth bass line, not to mention Claire's vocals are understated and processed with autotune. There is an impeccably gorgeous explosion of autotune vocal harmonies on the hook though that is, oh, it's, it's delish. And also, genuinely, heartbreaking, especially once you look into the lyrics, the self-doubt. It's so defeated, it's so soul-crushing. After this point on the album where something is really starting to click with me, I figure Claire is trying to consciously find power in simplicity, in subtlety, in lower volumes, and sometimes she does later into the track list, and sometimes not as much. I am equally impressed with the track North, though it has a totally different vibe to it. It's pursuing more of a ghostly indie rock aesthetic with faint grungy guitars, a booming beat, vocals that sound like the way you would sing quietly along to your favorite song in your car, and not in a bad way. The chorus on this track is fantastic with its nimble, jumpy chord progression. The vocal melody is incredibly unique and angular too. I also love how subtly psychedelic the sound of this track too is as it progresses. The following track, Bags though, is an utterly generic boilerplate indie rock song through and through. With absolutely no instrumental flavor to it whatsoever, the basic drum beat and mostly untreated, raw, twangy acoustic guitars on this track sound the way 
unseasoned tofu tastes. Even if we do get some piercing lo-fi pianos that eventually introduce themselves into the mix that sound like something out of an old microphones record. The song Softly is this album's inevitable dip into some pop and R&B fusions. The hook sounds like a summary throwback to 90s pop radio, but maybe the song's most defining characteristic is this odd, stumbling, descending guitar line that feels like it's ripped straight out of a Dirty Projectors album. It is a neat contrast to the impeccably smooth instrumentation grooving underneath it. Strangely enough, the song Sophia sounds like uh, a track from the Strokes album Come Down Machine. It's almost as if Claire is just doing some karaoke over a leftover instrumental from that album. <laughs> It's, it's not terrible, but I, I don't find it that appealing. But even though I'm not crazy about that track, the next few I am even more perplexed by. White Flag is the only track on the album I may categorize as a do-nothing song. The tune is drab, the beat is so mind-numbing, I can't wait for it to be over. Meanwhile, Feel Something feels like an attempt at writing a moody top 40 ballad but it doesn't really have the vocal presence or the high gloss production or even the instrumental presence to make it happen. The song Sinking is essentially more star and B that you could sip expensive coffee to, which given the current musical paradigm is not a bad direction to go in. But when you don't have the vocal chops to sell a song when you spotlight your voice in the way that you do on this track, it's going to fall short. I Wouldn't Ask You is basically the stereotypical attempt at trying to drum up a lengthy, mellow closer at the end of an album, but generally Immunity is a pretty soft album, so where does Claire go from here? Well, she sets her voice to some pretty distant pianos and what sounds like a chorus of kids singing or maybe a few kids singing and then they're multi-tracked. The chords and the simplicity of the tune read almost like an old gospel song but interpreted in a way where it would appeal to some bedroom pop fans. There's a really interesting transition at the midpoint where a beat is introduced, the melody changes, though the lyrics are, are mostly repeated. After this point though the track does grow a little tedious. I gotta say the song doesn't exactly justify its six plus minutes of runtime. Still, it does successfully send the album off in a very gentle way. Overall, I thought this record was just very okay. I'm mostly indifferent to it. My thoughts on it are mixed. Some tracks are great, some tracks completely, utterly unmemorable. But as Claire's first album outing into the limelight, it does show promise, but not a lot in the way of focus or execution sometimes. I'm feeling a strong 5 to a light 6 on this one. Tran, Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Claro, Immunity, Forever.